it's the jungle, it's the dream. If I want to see wildlife, I can literally look at any tree and there's something in there. The more I learn about them, the more interesting they become. Hi, I'm James Holden and I'm an odontologist. Uh, okay, so I grew up in Bournemouth, um, which is like a seaside town, it's really touristy. Uh, it's a relatively big city, so there's a lot of concrete and some tall buildings, but I live kind of on the outskirts. So uh, I live in a place called Talbot Woods. It's like um, some woodland, there's a nice stream and stuff like that. Uh, used to spend basically all my time down by the stream because like, there's no people there. Nobody really knows it's there, it's, even though it's in the middle of the city, so it's, it's pretty good. Now I'm in Katia National Park. Um, it's the jungle, it's the dream, uh, there's, no, there's no anything, if I want to be away from humans I can just walk for 20 minutes into the forest and I'm, in, I'm by myself, just in nature. Originally I was here doing research for my masters, um, which involved looking at the ecology of dragonflies. Now I'm doing that research in my own time while working as a tour guide at the lodge. I'm looking at what environmental factors affect dragonfly community structures and distributions. So uh, I have like 23 different sites. Uh, I record who's turning up there, so what, commu what dragonfly community is there. Um, then I look at the environmental variables of each site, which is like uh, the level of light, how deep the water is, what color it is, what pH, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I do statistics to see why things are turning up there, so, so you get four or five species turning up at one pond, and then two of those at another pond, and then another three of those at a different pond, I try to find out why they're only appearing at the ponds that they are. So I'm only catching ones that I don't know. If I know what the species is, I just record that I've seen it. Uh, if I don't know what it is, I catch it. Um, quite often I can then immediately identify it because I know who I'm expecting to be here and who's already here. Uh, if I can't immediately identify it, I'll take photos, take it with me, uh, so put it in an envelope, take it with me. Uh, go and look at IDs online, see if I can find out who it is. Um, we kind of give the dragonfly about three days. Uh, if I find out who he is before he dies, then he gets released. If I don't, then I have a specimen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys. The more I learn about them, the more interesting they become. Like, uh, started off just watching them hunt, watching them fight. Um, so like, they fight to the death. Uh, males drowning each other and that kind of thing, which is like, pretty intense. Um, the way they mate, that kind of thing, like, uh, nothing else is quite like that. Uh, they do a whole lot of mate guarding and that kind of stuff. Um, males will just grab a female and then fly around with her, so she doesn't really have much choice. <laughs> um, the way they hunt, like, uh, when they're flying, you just notice that it's, it just sort of stopped in the air for a second and then changed direction. And then if you, if you look at the video back, you realize it's actually gone up the most snacks and then you know, um, Watching them hunt spiders, they just go up to the spider web and pluck the spider off and fly off with it. <laughs> you sort of learn about their vision and that kind of thing. Uh, they've got 28,000 eyes in each eye. Uh, they can see more colors and wavelengths of light than we can even imagine. They can see polarized light. Um, so like uh, things like water looks completely different to them. Uh, uh, they see at 200 frames a second, which is like completely slow motion, which is why if you try to catch one, it's basically impossible. Um, they seem really intelligent. Like you try sneaking up on it, and it will just look at you, and then go back to it. And, like, A, a big challenge is trying to identify new things. So um, I have a list of what I expect to be here, as in, in between Dongna and Lamdong, which is literally that province and that province. 
um, the rivers that border. Um, so I have what I expect to be here, then I have what I expect to be in Vietnam, and then uh, so I've now found about 26 species which are new for Vietnam. So trying to find out what they are, I look at Cambodia records, Thailand records, okay so some of them I found which I already found in Korea, so I have to go a bit further and then you know, then I found a new one for science and it's just like, there's no record of this absolutely anywhere. Uh, a one very similar species which was recorded in Nepal 30 years ago and then India 70 years ago. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, right, but then why is it here? And then I look at the species description and it turns out it is completely different, so it's got to be something else. Uh, and then exhaustive literature search. So I know the genus is Gynocantha. There's 17 species in the genus. Basically go through each one and say, no, it's not that one, no, it's not that one, no, it's not that. Oh, okay, well, it's got to be new then. Um, and then having to describe it, which is obviously a nightmare. So what I want to happen is uh, get a PhD, that's the next step. Um, ideally I would do the PhD here, uh, I just need to find a sponsor. Uh, Bangor University is really interested in the research I'm doing, but I have to pay fees, so it's, funding is the issue. Uh, otherwise, PhD opportunities at other places, so far nothing's come to fruition. Um, but yeah, so I'd like to get a PhD. Um, then after that, I would like to do some sort of postdoc work, which would be <clears throat> six to ten years affiliated with a lab, but then doing my own field work. So again, I'd be coming out to a place like this or South America or somewhere else. Um, then after postdoc stuff, either just keep working as part of a lab doing my own research uh, or possibly do professorship, um, which is obviously incredibly difficult. But uh, I think it would be kind of cool if I could portray my passion for like younger audiences, you know what I mean? And inspire other people to go out and do what they want as opposed to being like, oh, we need to get an office job. And yeah. It's a Lepido trigona. <laughs> uh, stingless bee. Uh, otherwise nicknamed sweat bees because they like your sweat. You can tell when you're near a nest because you get like hundreds and you're just like, stop it. They like, knock them off and then like, you know, the second your arm is away, they're just coming and landing again.